Okay, okay, take five. Okay, welcome everybody. It's my third live stream today. Um, third one. Can you believe it already? It's it's gone so fast. Again, welcome to uh, to the show. In the next hour, I'll be kind of going through some stuff here for you. Um, Corey Toplinicki, I'm a graphic designer and I'm here to help people who own photo booths to create animations and uh, some overlays. So let's, let's just kind of see what we're going to do today. Um, so After Effects, I don't know if everyone is familiar with it. Um, it's another Adobe product, uh, part of the uh, same family as Photoshop. Uh, we use this to animate, uh, to create effects and videos. Um, I'm not going to do a tutorial on that today. It's, it's going to be more of you having some knowledge of what is possible, okay? What you can sell to your client, how you can make your business stand out by offering services that, you know, where you take a green screen like this video right here. This is taken with, a, with an iPhone. It's not hard. Set up a green screen on the wall, put some lights on, uh, set, up, set up a camera and take some video. You know, trying to stay in the frame, you can see sometimes he kind of like leaves, leaves the green screen, which makes it hard for us designers to uh, compensate for that. But really, uh, it's very simple. And then we take that and remove the background and we create an animation like this. Uh, a touch to start screen or you could have it part of a countdown or even AR where they appear in the picture with you. And when you get your print, you're in a photo with the bride or the groom and they weren't even there. There was all pretend, right? AR, AR stuff. It's great stuff. So I'm going to show you kind of how that's done. And uh, of course, we'll jump back into Photoshop. We all love Photoshop. But today I'm going to show you how to take white text, just type out someone's name. And then I'm going to show you how to apply some cool effects. You know, make it pop, make it glow, make it gold, make it silver all using layer styles. Fantastic stuff. Okay, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Ooh, what an intro. All right, I like a channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, I am Corey Toplinicki. I'm a graphic designer. Uh, for the last 10 so many years, I don't know. Yeah, it's been a long time and, and uh, I love what I do, I really do. But I've also been a mobile DJ for 30 some years, okay? I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of weddings, events, fundraisers, you name it. Uh, I, know the, it the, I know the industry very well, so I, I really want to pass some advice on to people who are just starting out, um, you know, it, it could be hard out there. I've, I've got a lot of clients that are no longer in business because this whole COVID thing and all this stuff and shutting down events and a lot of people didn't survive and, and the ones that have are, are struggling. So I understand how it can be. So um, really, let, let's talk some shop, guys. Let's talk some shop before we get into the dirty work, okay? You know, a lot of people when they get in the industry, they, they, uh, they're not familiar with some things that they didn't think of came with a photo booth, you know, like photography. Uh, you know, you buy a photo booth, you photography is taking a picture, but they don't understand there's, there's rules of photography, you know, like the third, you know, rule of thirds and so on. So it's like, it's like a couple of years of, of college to kind of like learn all the stuff of photography and, and to buy a photo booth and have to learn it all in one day. It's not fair, right? So, um, and you know, understanding light and, and how a camera works and all that kind of stuff. So there is some learning that needs to be done with photography. Okay. You have to just watch some tutorials on YouTube, uh, read a book or simply yet bring in a photographer who shows you some stuff. Okay. I mean, that's the best way. Um, so with that being said, I, I just want everyone to understand that like when it comes to graphic design, it's the same thing as photography. You know, there's with the power of uh, Photoshop and now Canva and all these other things that are popping up. It's so easy for you to make your own designs for an overlay or even some start screens or animations for your mirror booth or iPad booth or whatever it is. 
the 360 booth, a lot of people are making their own stuff. Canva is great. Uh, Photoshop is great. Uh, whatever you use is great. But sometimes it's not. Okay, I need, I need you guys to understand that because you can go into Canva and, you know, it's, it's really easy, right? Canva is super easy. You just bring in stuff and you put this there and then print or send or whatever, right? And it's done. Uh, you can buy, you can just grab a template already done for you and put something in there, text, whatever. But just because you can do that doesn't mean it's going to look right because of the rules that are involved with graphic design, like alignment and colors, uh, how you add a photo, how you edit a photo, um, all those things, you know, it, it, it's, it's nice to be able to do your own stuff, but you have to understand that it takes a little bit of research, okay? You have to just watch some tutorials uh, on graphic design and, you know, how to, you know, properly place things and be inspired too. I mean, I, I love going through magazines. Magazines have the best ads, you know. Those ads are, you know, a lot of money spent on these to design them, right? So uh, some are like super simple, just a white page with a little black text in the corner or, or very complex, but it all makes sense because it's designed you know, by a professional, a graphic designer, and you really notice the, the designs by professional and the designs by an amateur. Some amateurs are killing it though, like they are doing very, very well, and some are almost there, and they will post their overlay on a social group, like Facebook groups or whatever, and ask, what do you guys think of my overlay? Okay, and then everyone, is coming i love it can you do this for me how do you do this when the when the overlay is a disaster okay it, it's hard for me to bite my tongue and once in a while i'll speak up and say well don't you think this could you know blah 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 and people get insulted you know they they get insulted and they get you know defensive and they get right in my face and it's like whoa okay maybe i shouldn't have said anything but but really guys i mean Having some, you know, some critique on your work is very healthy. It makes you a better designer. Don't get defensive. Uh, take it in. Um, even if you don't agree with the advice, at least take a second look. Uh, being, being defensive is, is not a good way of uh, you know, working or learning. But it's also not really nice as a person. You know? Just kind of like hear what they have to say. Um, of course, when I do a comment, I'm not rude about it. I hope I'm not, but um, you know, just I'm, I'm not trying to pick you apart to make me look better. I'm trying to help you. Okay, so, and that's what people do when they critique you. They're not there to attack you. You know, people don't attack you when they when they give you advice. They they love you, and they just want to help you. Okay. Um, I also have clients coming to me and I'm, I'm seeing on social media too where they're posting an ad from a, a competitor who is saying that they will do you know one hundred dollars an hour you know three hundred dollars for three or four or five hours for a wedding and and they're saying how do I compete with that you know now I have to lower my price no you don't no, you don't, because like photography, you have to learn this and this and that. And graphic design, you have to learn a little bit. And when it comes to being a salesperson, you need to learn a little bit about that too. There's, there's tutorials out there that will help you become a better competitor and to understand how someone who's charging much, much less is actually making you look better. 30 some years has a mobile DJ, I used to get very upset, you know, having my price and then seeing someone charging half of what I'm charging. Uh, but I don't get upset anymore because you get what you get. You know, you pay 500 bucks for a DJ, you're going to get a $500 DJ. And if you pay $2,000 for a DJ, you're going to get a $2,000 DJ. You understand? You know, charging less when times are tough 
You know, like I don't have any bookings. You know, I need to book now. I need money. I'm starving. I need business. So I will charge less. I will charge half. And it always comes back to haunt you. It always does because you book an event for your discounted price and the events in six months, they book you because they love the price. Six months from now, you're passing by offers that are triple of that money because you booked something months ago when you're really hurting. It, it makes sense. You know, you're always going to hear people say your price is too high. And people will defend that. They will fight. They will say, no, I'm not because, because we, you know, and there's a right way and a wrong way of approaching people who, who are resisting your price. And there's lots of, lots of tutorials and uh, inspirational speakers uh, on Facebook, TikTok, and all that that speak of this. You know, take a look, uh, take a peek around and, and get inspired by some of these uh, professional salespeople uh, who can really advise you on how to get through some difficult times, how to create value for your company. Um, you know, why it's important to stay firm with your price. You know, you, you offer a premium price and you need to bring a premium service, which means sometimes you need to outsource the graphic design because you can't do it like a professional. So you get a professional to do it. It's part of being a premium product. Or if you're going to learn, to learn. And, and learn. Do tutorials. Learn your craft to become good at graphic design or photography or being a salesperson. Mm. Oh, it, it breaks my heart. It really does. It breaks my heart to see people getting out of business, selling their boots. But, uh, you know, after two, three years of this COVID stuff, we're going to have two, three years of backlog of weddings and events that have been postponed and postponed. Good times are coming. It's going to be lobster and steak every day. You just have to stick with it and find a way to survive. And maybe while you have some downtime, if you're not so busy, try to improve your business by learning and maybe investing in whatever. But um, you, you can you can do it and you can make it and a lot of people are fighting i understand and good for you guys um but enough of that enough of talk and shop i'm done okay what are we going to talk about now okay okay so after effects i'm not going to do a tutorial on after effects at all i'm just going to show you some of the cool stuff you can do with it um there, there are many, many ways you can create videos. Okay. Many. After Effects is very complex. The learning curve is pretty steep. But if you know Photoshop and you're familiar with Illustrator or InDesign, then it's just another Adobe tool. And the learning curve is a little less steep. Um, so don't be afraid of it. And if you are working with After Effects, uh, you know, it's great, right? I love it love after effects we make really cool things in after effects and and a lot of times people don't understand we invest money into our programs we call them plugins or whatever you you may call uh you know some add-ons to the program to make things better and um i'm going to share with you some of the top ones i love that are free so if you have after effects i really recommend you getting these uh let's start one second here live guys i'm live and i do edit these videos after so all these little things i'm kind of edit later here so i'm not too worried about it first first yeah first i want to show you guys something here i want to show you some of the top websites i love too okay so if you're if you're looking for png files some flowers some glitter or sparkles to put on your overlay and maybe some uh logos or whatever uh this is a great site too so i'll share this with you uh, where are we here there we go it's 
Okay, so this is called PNG Wing. Um, lots of cool stuff. I showed you guys PNG Tree last week or the week before. Uh, this is another popular one. The only thing I don't like about this site is like when you click on something and there's you don't know where to click because of all these ads and down now and blah blah. It's right down here. Uh, kind of a pain in the butt, but like I said, it's a great site uh, to have or to visit. It's free, so we all love free. So that's PNG Wing. PNG Wing. Love, love, love it. Okay, another one too, guys, is if you're if you're like uh looking for video some background video or whatever for for your animation or whatnot uh, this is another really good site i want to show you right here it's again we all love it free pixels pixels.com here you see some videos and they're all free click on that you can kind of see a demo of what this is I mean, you know, how to, you know, looking for the right video. It'd be easy to, by just searching. I can glitter. Yeah, look at that. That's a, you know, it's the right portrait dimension, right for mirrors. It's kind of cool stuff. Anyways, that is pixels, pixels.com. Love, love, love it. I know you will too. Okay, so my next website that you're gonna just absolutely love. I showed you how to remove background and all that stuff from pictures and all that on uh, on, on on Photoshop. Super easy, and it's a lot of fun, and it's really, 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 you know, the the perfection of the cut is controlled by you because of all the tools we use in Photoshop. But if you don't want to use tools, you're not too worried about the feathering and some parts that are missing, uh, which could sometimes happen when you, when you remove a background. Uh, this is another good site here, guys. This is remove B and remove BG. Okay, it's remove BG slash upload is the name of the site. Super, super love it why okay i'm gonna bring in an image just anything uh let's find something here okay let's bring in these lovely ladies here so i just click and drag into here to uploads and then download see how it removes the background so there it is there's the picture right there so here you can see like the original and then remove the background and then you have the file right here just like that remove bg slash upload you want to get it you're loving the show already aren't you you're writing this stuff down aren't you you bet you are all right guys so again we're, we're talking about after effects after Effects is super, super cool. I just love it. And we have plugins that we use for it, and it's super cool. Uh, I'm going to share with you my top uh, top ones I use, and, and maybe you might be interested in getting something like this because it's uh, uh, it makes your job easier when you're creating, uh, for sure, by far. First one here is Video Copilot, and they have the fx console love this app it's a plugin plug it in and then you can quickly access all your effects and stuff it's probably the most used effect or plugin i use in after effects by far uh, so it's probably my number one favorite thing i love with after effects the fx console free at video copilot okay let's go move on here Video Copilot has lots of cool stuff. Optical flares and Saber. No, is it Saber? No. Uh, 
I use a lot of stuff here. I have the whole bundle. I use it all the time. I'm going to actually use one of the effects uh, in, the, in the tutorial here to show you how cool plugins can be. Lots of cool things. So when you see graphic designers or animators making cool stuff, it's because they're using plugins that they paid for and they're not cheap. And lots of stuff for free, guys. Check out the free plugins and stuff. You'll love it. FX Console. Check out Video Copilot. It is awesome. Okay, so next we have the uh, Trap Code. Oh boy. I love Trap Code. I use it all the time. It's fire, lighting, everything. Lighting, lighting. I just love lights. Being able to use lights. And we're going to show you that too in the uh, tutorial today. Love it. Lots of cool things. And then you just, uh, you know, install it on your After Effects and you're able to do all these fancy things. Use it all the time. After Effects. Yeah. Guys, After Effects, After Effects, you'll love it. So, you know, why not just get into it, guys? Let's do the After Effects. I'm going to bring on the monitor here and show you the interface of After Effects. Uh, you know, we have like a timeline down here where you add your files. And during the time here, we're going to make things move. So really, we're going to just start with a new project. Oops, we're going to start with a new project, and we'll call it uh, Wedding Touch to Start. We'll make sure that we're doing this for a mirror booth, so we'll do eight or 1080 width by uh, 1920. And, of course, the frame rate, we'll keep at 25, 25 frames per second. That, that means 100 is 4 seconds, 25 is 1 second, so it's easier to keep track of time when you're creating animations that are time triggered or whatnot. And then we'll make this video uh, 300 to say, which is 300, which is uh, 12 seconds. And we'll say OK. Now we kind of like have a canvas here, uh, just like we do in Photoshop. Uh, it's it can be kind of complex, I know, guys. So let's kind of just stick with me here, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to click and drag files. And uh, we're going to grab that video of that green screen. And we're going to bring it in, and then I'm going to show you quickly how to remove the green screen. And then from there, it's game on. Anything is possible. Once you remove the background, you can put them anywhere. You can do anything. So knowing that, being able to sell that, you can have them have fun with it then. They, they can make a scene where they, you know, like anything is possible. I love it. Okay, so we're looking where we're going to do here. Okay, so we're going to bring in this video. I'm just going to click and drag it from my other screen to here. And now I have a video in here. I'm going to click and drag it into my workflow, and you notice that it is the wrong direction. So I'm just going to rotate it so it's in place. There we go. I can scale it to up and down, whatever I want. Okay, so here we have an image, and it's a video, and I'm just going to run the video. Hit my space bar, and I'm able to see the video run. Okay, so I am seeing what they got going on here. Okay. Awesome. And you can move the timeline and see what they're doing. So, you know, they have this part here. They were just talking. So I'm going to cut that part out. Just going to move the timeline. Just click and drag this. So I can someone I'm starting about right here, maybe. I think this is where the party starts. Right about here. Okay, let's try that. Oh, yeah. Go, girl. Okay, they're saying hi, kisses, and, and I think that part at the end right here where they like laughing and they're kind of pulling apart, I love that because it shows emotion. It tells a story. I love it. 
Okay. So I have a video here. I have it highlighted. And, you know, I just want to take part of that green screen out. Less to work with. So I'm going to mask it. I just cut it right about there, right? I have less to work with now. The less you have to work with, the less room you have for error. Excellent. And you see right behind it is like a transparent uh, texture there. I'm going to just change it to black. It'll still be transparent, but it's just easier for me to see. Uh, so I'll just click on this right here and change it to black. Okay, so I got this image here. Now we're going to create an effect on this. Okay, ready to go. Uh, of course, you can go to effects and you can look for it the effect you're looking for. I have the FX console, which I just control and space bar and this thing pops up. See how much I use it every time, every time. And we're gonna do the, the key light. Key light this is a very popular effect used in lots of different programs. Okay, so now I have key light effect on this video, I want to apply that green to it. And just like that, we eliminated the background. But you see, I mean, it's not perfect. It just needs a little bit of fine tuning. A little bit of fine tuning. Okay. So we'll start here by just giving just a little bit more here. Okay, a little bit more screen color green. And then I'm going to change the results here. I want to change the results to a screen matte. Okay, there we go. Now we can see black and whites. This is much easier to work with. Black is black, white is white. And on this option here, on the screen matte, matte, we're going to add a little bit more black. Make the black blacker. You don't want too much black because then it starts taking away from some of the shadows and stuff. And then we'll make white whiter. A little bit whiter, right about there. Okay. Now we'll change the view back to final results so we can see what we have here. And we got something great. That's much better. Here we go. Now we can run this video and they are solo. No background. Yeah, super, super, super awesome. Okay, that is great. Okay, we're going to move on here. You know, what, what, what could we possibly do now? Is that the end? Nope. Let's do some more. Okay, so now we have them cut out. I'm going to scale them up now or scale them down, whatever you want to do. But I like that. And remember, he leaves a frame a little bit here and there. So if you just kind of like compensate for that. Then it doesn't seem like he is. Here we go. Now we run. I just want to make sure that it's nice and centered. I don't want it like way over here or too much over there. Just kind of center it. And make sure you're capturing the good stuff, not like that. I love the way I love the way that ends. Okay. Now we have that. I'm going to go ahead and add text. Okay, and I'm going to say Jordan and Monica. I don't know. Monica. Okay, there we go. We have text. Okay, now I'm going to just align that so on the paragraph, make sure it's like going that way. Here I can like move it up and down or something like that. Okay, let's do that. And what's really cool is like Photoshop, right guys? Like you have these, this, like, this is your layer panel. So I'm gonna move the text behind and look, it's behind them now. How cool is that to have something coming from behind them or to have them over top of the text a little bit to give, you know, give some dimension. Now going in that text, that text right there, I can uh, 
go into like layer styles just like Photoshop. Create a bevel. If I zoom in, I can really see the effects I'm doing. Um, I'm going to put a background, but instead of putting a background, I'm going to bring in a background video. So again, I'm just going to click and drag this into the layers. I have this video. Super cool. Oh, I can't see them now. Well, I'll just put the background in the back on the bottom. Boom. There they are. Now we have background that's animated. If you wonder why when you're viewing too, like it's, it's because sometimes you have to go down to quarter quality to get a faster computer here. Sometimes After Effects can really slow you down. So we're just going to look at this now again here. Now we have a background that is animated. Awesome. Now, to give them kind of depth, I'm going to give them a, like a drop shadow. Okay, so I'm going to go back up to the video. This is them. Add a layer style and a drop shadow. I always make my drop shadow 100% so I can see it. And I can see what I'm doing here. And if I just rotate it a little bit, I can see where that drop shadow is coming in. So you can see there's a drop shadow here. And I'm going to just size it a little bit more so it's more blurred out. There, we kind of like have a shadow behind them now to make it look like they're in front and there's something behind them. Love it. Now, the thing I don't like about when you cut things out, it, it's like you get the quality you get. You know, the video is what you get. So you, sometimes you might have to edit the video. So again, I'm going to add another effect here. So I'm going to click on that layer and put levels. Okay. Uh, did it work? I don't think it did. Hang on. Oh, got too much going on or something. Hang on. Okay. Anyways, how you guys all doing? <laughs> waiting, waiting, waiting. You know. You know, that's one thing I don't like is when things freeze up like that. Give me a second here. I'll just get you back. And remember, guys, there's there's After Effects, but, you know, the, what I'm doing right now, there's other programs that do it, too. And uh, I'll share some of those with you next week uh, as we uh, move on with these tutorials. I think we're good now, so let's go back and see. Oh. Okay, we're almost there. While we're waiting, I just want to give you one more tip. Tip of the day for Photoshop when you're creating an overlay is have the vision of the overlay, like the finished product already in your head. Okay, guys, always have it ready in your mind. When you go onto Photoshop, you're just creating what you vision. Uh, if you go there and you have no vision and you're just pushing things around and adding things and taking things out and trying to find what you're looking for, uh, you will end up with something that might not be as good as if you would have thought it out. So always think out your designs and uh, have it ready. And then when you go into Photoshop, you're just making it. Or you go into Canva or whatever. You are already done. All right, my After Effects froze up. But anyways, we'll get back to that in a sec. 
It is too bad. Uh, 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 uh. You know I'll be editing this out, right? You just know it. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to shut it down. So because I'm shutting it down, I didn't save it, so I'm going to lose everything. Oh, man. Okay, whatever. We get the idea. Like, the whole point I'm showing you this is because it's important to understand that... Uh, you know, what you you can offer, you know, what makes you a premium photo booth company better than your competitors is you understand what you can bring. You know, why are you better? Why, why can you charge? Why can you charge more? It's because you offer this and you offer that. When people say you charge too much and you defend yourself and you say, blah, 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 blah. That's not the way to do it. You need to show them. They need to. They're coming to you for a reason, okay? And it's just human nature to want less, to want to pay less for as much as you can get, right? I mean, it's just, don't you do that, you know? But when you're on the other end and you're the salesperson, you have them already talking to you in a sense that they're there, they want your product, but they're always gonna try to say it's too much. And you have to stand your ground. You do. You really have to stand your ground and and show them why you're worth more. Why you're better than the $500 DJ. You know what I mean? Okay. Where are we here? <laughs> okay. No, that's too bad. That's too bad. Okay, we're just going to go on Photoshop, I guess. So, guys, Photoshop, you know, we talked about all that stuff. If you, if you missed some of my uh, uh, earlier tutorials, watch them because we talk about how to uh, create an overlay, how to have a transparent background, how to remove background for logos, the difference from PNGs and JPEGs and all that kind of stuff. So, if you are interested in learning some of that stuff, the terminology that we use, uh, check it out. Uh, my previous tutorials will explain all that. I'm not about to go back and repeat all that because some people have seen it already. So let's move on here to Photoshop. Okay. So here we have the Photoshop screen. I am going... And, and like here we, again, we have the panel tool or the layers, I mean... And I got some layers in here. They're, the eyeballs are turned off because you don't see them yet. Okay. I was going to turn on a background here so we have a background to work with. I got Photoshop or After Effects opening on the side here, so we should be able to get back. Here, I'm going to just click with a text tool. It's uh, it's one thing about After Effects too is is uh, it's it's really um, you know you need a good computer you really do otherwise you'll be waiting constantly uh, I'm in the middle of sw swapping over computers but I didn't want to do it till after this tutorial was done um, so anyways I have text here I'm gonna leave the text thick like that. That's me. So I got a name here. I'm going to leave it nice and thick. It's not the prettiest of fonts, and it's definitely not a font you would want to use in a wedding, but to really understand how these layer styles work for text, I'm, I just want to show you um, how it works. So I'm going to click on a corner, and when I do that, I'm able to like make things bigger and smaller. Okay. Uh, learning how to like do things like you can see maybe the O and it's like too far over so we're going to just click on that and just bring in the R bit and we'll do the same thing with the C just bring it in 
And you really have to pay attention to stuff like that, you know, to make sure that the font works, if the C seems like it's too far over to correct it. Or sometimes when you do apostrophe S, the apostrophe is way up here, you know, uh, people don't understand, then you, you can bring that down. Uh, like again here, maybe on the C, I can bring that, that C in a bit closer. There we go. Okay. Now I have a layer right here. I'm going to put it to the top so we know. Oops. Oh boy, come on. Computer. Okay. Mm. I don't know what's going on with my computer today. Okay, so we uh, moved to the top. So if I double click on that layer, I'm able to adjust it. And not adjust it, I mean like edit it a bit, add some features, some effects to it. And just to come in a little bit closer here to the text so we can see better. Okay, so if you add, uh, you know, bevels, bevels are really cool. Uh, I use them a lot. It kind of gives them the layers depth. You can soften it. You also can change the style of the bevel being inner or emboss or pillow or stroke. Uh, inner shadows create like inner shadows, you know, on the text, you know, like this. And it's really cool. This is a cool effect if you're going to try, try to create glows or make it look like the text is engraved. You know, and satins and inner glows, they're all kind of used to create texture on the font. Okay. When I create effects on a layer, it gives you this FX right here. The FX. Well, there's my... That means there's an effects, okay? And I can, I can open that effects to see what the effects are. Just clicking on the arrow. Okay. And this is this here. Like I turned it off so we can. How cool is that? Look at that. That's a nice shiny gold. Beautiful. And there's nothing brought in. There's no click and dragging something in to create a. This is all done using the effects panel. So if I. Hold my Alt key. Remember, Alt key is like the copy. Hold my Alt and click and drag that effect onto top of the key right there. I just created. Look at that. That's so cool. I'm going to turn that one off now. Now, let's just investigate what we did to kind of create this. So, when I go into my layer panel, I can see we put a bevel on it. You can kind of like move things around to really understand what these all do. See how I made it thicker and thinner? You can use this. The best way to learn is just move things around. Okay. And like, look at this thing here. What if I move this like that or like this? What's this do? You know, just kind of play around. Okay. Awesome. And then we have this color overlay. So what does that do? It's kind of creating some light on it, see? So you can change that to blue. Now we have some kind of gradient on it. You can turn up and down the opacity to kind of see what it's doing. Okay, that's, that's what that's doing. Okay, maybe we'll leave it there. Now we'll go to this other one's pattern. We'll turn it on and off so we can see what it does. Okay, so now we know what it does. We're able to change the opacity, maybe we want a little bit more of that texture. And then this pattern here, you can change it, right? There's a bunch of different patterns that you can choose. You know, so why not play around and see what these patterns are? And if you go online, guys, you can download, you know, there's so many sites where you can buy Photoshop ready 
patterns that you just quickly install into your panel here and then you can come back to them every time look at that that's so cool and then we have a pattern too you can change the scale of it make it really fine or whatever make it really hoarse yeah look at that this other one's outer glow i'm gonna turn it up and down so we can see what it does so it's giving a glow on the outside kind of like a drop shadow <clears throat> if you know anything about glowing if you have something like a halo effect uh lighting behind a sign it's different than a drop shadow uh, an outer glow is you know an outer glow it's like a halo and a drop shadow is not but we also have a drop shadow on this because what you know what that is doing is making it look like it's lifted up and there's something behind it that's glowing right cool tricks i've been a designer for a long long time and i still learn new things there's still so much i don't know so don't be overwhelmed by stuff just kind of learn and then what i do is i go and i sit down after a tutorial and create what they did and then really understand you know uh, what you're doing uh so this is uh, another effect. I'm just going to click and drag this effect onto it now. Now, this is really cool. Okay. In this effect, again, you can go to the bevel and you can change how that looks. And when you create your own, your own effect on a layer, and you take text and you fool around with all these things and you create something really, really cool, you can save it. You can save it so it's in your panel all the time and you can always go back and apply it to a new text. Now, Corey Toplinicki, there's my name. I'm going to go and choose something that is thin. And we're going to go really thin. Okay, something like that. Super, super cool. Now, with thin text, it's a lot different. You know, it's different because, you know, bevels are set for thick text. So, when you apply thin text, then it's not going to look, you know, you have to maybe make adjustments here. Or more things. Uh, oh, and then, that's another thing, too. When you're moving these things around, you're like, oh, 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 look what I did. And you did it by accident. Those are the best ones. The best discoveries are ones by accident. Look at this. This is great. And we're really just, you know, okay, so that's that. So we can go in here and you can change gradients by just clicking on colors and make that blue. Okay. And see, we just did something by accident. Playing around. Okay. Love, love, love using bevels and strokes and when you double click on things you get this layer style here but you also can click up here on styles and you'll see some that come with photoshop of course i have a lot because i i make my own and i download a bunch of stuff but um where you have pre-made things that are already ready to go and then once i click on that i can come over here and adjust it so to make it better you know just play around things like that and when you're when you're using i don't like to use like the uh, uh, inner or outer glows and drop shadows i like to do that later depending on the piece i'm working on because that is a very dramatic drop shadow right that's like lifted up you know maybe my design doesn't need that shorten that up when you're doing a drop shadow, I always go to research, uh, reset to default. I always start that way. And then I always turn it up all the way. That way you can see it better. Now I can like really see what I'm doing. Okay. And really to get, get in there. Get your hands dirty, girl. Here we go. Double click on that. And... Really, just kind of play around with things. And drop shadows are really cool too. 
when you don't use this default color, you're kind of using the color from the item you're kind of drop shadowing. So I'll click on that and I'll eye drop that gold color there. And maybe change that to just a little bit more grayer. Here we go. And now I can go back to that and just take my drop shadow and reduce it now. So you don't want to. There we go. A really nice drop shadow. It's not overwhelming. When you do an overwhelming drop shadow, overdo it on a really, really thin text, it gets it becomes really hard to read. Okay. You know that gradient there too, see what it does. You know, we can change all that too and, and the satin look. Play around with these layer styles, boys and girls. You love, love, love it. And then it doesn't seem so plain. But don't get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. Sometimes plain is good. Simple is good. And that is that is the issue I'm seeing online is people are discovering these things, right? They're like, wow. Even when they cut out their first picture, they're just like, I did that by myself. And then they place it on the overlay and then they put it in the, a picture of somebody on an overlay in the corner. And then they, they for some reason, think there should, there should be balance, right? So they take that picture, they duplicate it and flip it and put it on this side too. So you got two people, the same picture, but it's flipped and it's on the... Don't do that. Don't do it. That's not how it's done. And it makes you look amateur. And if you want to be better than everybody else who's putting out their photo booth in your town, you can't do stuff like that. Okay. And, and when you're doing corporate and you're using logos and colors, sometimes when you design something for a corporate event, you need to sit down and look at that company. You need to sit down and look at their website, uh, understand what, what they are, who, what your audience is and, and their brand and to capture that on the overlay. You know, there's some people who do a one photo overlay and that's all they do because they think that that looks best because it's a bigger picture and they love a one picture and they don't like how a two picture or a three picture overlay, you know, they don't like it. And what I have to say on that is it's not about you. This isn't something that is about you. You're not selling your photo booth to yourself. You know, these are decisions that are made by your client. If your client wants a two by six photo, then that's what they should get. You shouldn't have some type of policy that restricts, you know, any growth of what you offer by saying, we only do one photo because that's what I like, you know? Some people go to an event with the overlay that your, that client has not even seen. There's people that go to an event with an overlay they made or they whatever, without the client even knowing what it is. They're seeing it for the first time when it prints out of the printer. Uh, how does how does that when when it comes to customer service that demonstrates there is none. You know, there's no communication of how you can make sure. The event's good for them. Everything's custom and approved by them. They have more control. You know, <clears throat> sometimes when you're doing these overlays, uh, the, 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 the client might not like it. You know, they, they, they might look at the design and say, well, you know, this is what my photo booth people brought. You know, that all could be avoided if you just would have had them involved in the process of building the overlay. Uh, yes, it can create uh, quite the hassle when you have a bridezilla type of client who is very particular. Um, but if you have the right graphic designer, hopefully you can get through that painful process uh, a little bit more smoother. And it happens. One out of ten, for me, one out of ten events is dealing with a very difficult client and having some patience and having the right team behind you uh 
you know, when you're a graphic designer and you're not, you're not a graphic, but you, you do graphics, you make your own overlays, but you're not a graphic designer and you have a Bridezilla, good luck, good luck. And at the end, you're not going to look good because you just don't have the right communication skills when it comes to stuff like this, because there's a different language when it comes to graphic design. You know, when um, your camera, I mean, photographers have these words I've never heard of before. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a trade. And you have a photo booth and you're going to go out and use these things that are, you know, tr you know photography is a trade. But the gra graphic design is a trade. And you're supposed to learn it all. You don't have to. You just have to study a little bit to understand the terminology and source out work that you can't do. Don't attempt to do things. I do it all the time. I built my website and I'm not a web designer. And it, it's, I'm still there. I mean, I'm still working on it because in the be I should have started in the beginning uh, by hiring a professional to do it, outsource it because, you know, three years into my website, I'm still, you know, working on it. But I mean, I like to learn too though making mistakes. I do it all the time. So when I see people making mistakes, I'm not judging you. I'm just wanting to help you. Okay. So let's get back to after effects. I think I still can get it working. And of course I lost everything. So I'm just going to quickly get back to where we were. When you see the edited version, you're going to love it. You're going to love the edited version. So again, we had that, we rotated, make it like boom, boom. My composition's wrong. And really, I mean, when you have a smooth running computer, my, my computer purrs, man, it's beautiful. But today it just seems to be struggling. Uh, again, I'm gonna add that key effect. It goes super fast here, guys, get you caught up. Super Bowl Sunday. I know lots of people are getting ready for their big party, going to a party. I mean, I think it's probably a, the first Super Bowl in a long time where people can really, you know, get together again. It's been a difficult time, hasn't it? Okay. Uh, again, I'm going to just to alter some of those effects. Sharpen it up. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I'm going to add that screen mat, remember? And make the blacks blacker. And the whites whiter. Beautiful. Final result, done. Of course, we have like some stuff that is not good, but doesn't matter because we can just scale this image like that. Then what we did is we created a uh, text. I don't know how to quickly come up with names. I just kind of, and Okay. And then we're going to change that uh, text to black so we can see it for now. Here we go. And of course, align it and align. Okay, then we learned too that we can put that layer behind, just like that. Okay, so we got something going on here. Now, again, we're just gonna edit that video, the beginning part. To about right. There. Okay, now we got it going on. Okay. Now uh, we're going to add the uh, background. 
and I have that blue grid type of style background behind it. I'm gonna put that behind them so now they're there. Now we have that. I'll change the text really quick here to white. Awesome. Okay, now we have text. Now how this works is uh, the time frame is I'm gonna add these these little ticks here, like a key thing here. And I'm gonna add position of the text will be there at the beginning and we'll move it down. Let's move it down. And then we can say after four seconds, which is about 100, it'll be up here. So now when we go back to the beginning, you can see that we have action. We want you to, I really want you to it's super important. And why is this super important? Why do I need to know this? Well, because this kind of stuff, we're using a timeline and you're just kind of like moving things around and you're adding these things to make movement. You can do all of it in Photoshop. Now, After Effects is cool because you can add effects and stuff, but Photoshop, uh, you can animate text and stuff too. And we're gonna do that next time. How you do you know, animated overlays and create animated buttons and stuff. Super cool. And you can do animations for start screens in Photoshop. Or you can take a video like this and you can edit it in Photoshop. Yes, you can. Okay. I'm going to show you a cool effect. So I'm going to create a new layer here, a solid, and then I'm going to apply an effect to it, which is, oh, there's my thing. We'll call it uh, light. Okay, and then on that layer, I'm going to add the Lux. <clears throat> the Lux. Lux, love it. Okay, so Lux is a plugin. Um, super awesome and free. Okay, now I have an effect. So now I can apply light. So I'm going to apply a light, a light source. And in this, fa in this case, I'm going to do a spotlight that has white in it. Let's say, okay. And now I have a light source on my panel. Uh, you also have to remember that when I'm doing this in the office, I, I have two screens. So I have this panel here on a different screen usually. So I'm going to take that light source and using my arrow keys, I'm just going to move it all the way up here. Now light works on 3D layers. And... I mean, don't don't let me confuse you because I don't want you to learn all this stuff right now. But, but I just want you to understand like how some of this stuff works and, uh, and how cool it is. So let's kind of like learn about Lux. Okay, so I have Lux here and I got this light bulb that I can like aim. The spotlight I can aim. But like I said, it only works, works on 3D layers. So we're going to make the couple here 3D by adding that. Oh, that was the wrong video. There it is. So you see what happened? I got this light bulb and it works on this layer. How cool is that? So I'm going to just take that light source and duplicate it. So I got two sources of it now. And I can move this one over here. And each light source can move it on its own. It moves all by itself. Again, I'm going to add another, I'm going to duplicate this one and move it over to this side. Here we go. Now I can move that. Because I'm adding a light source to them as a 3D layer, I'm creating not a, such a flat image. You know, sometimes when you have a cutout, it looks cut out because you know it just doesn't blend so adding light is really cool 
because then it kind of creates that illusion that you are working with a 3D layer. And then in my time frame here, I can mark these uh, light sources, right? Say they're here, and then over here in this part of the time frame, that light, this light here goes to here, and that one goes to here, that one goes to here. So now when I move my time frame, I, I can see that I got light that's moving. Again, creating the illusion that these people are popping off that video. So at this point, I want that one to go here, and that one to go here, and maybe that one to go here. So now I have something pretty cool. Woohoo! Yeah, and you got that light moving around. Awesome. gonna stretch that up anyways now we have something pretty cool now I'm gonna show you taking maybe one of those lights or adding a new light it's gonna add a new light Oops. new light I'm gonna make this one maybe I'll make this one uh, blue okay move it over to the side here and we'll take that pointer and we'll aim it over here Oops. see now we have blue being mixed in with white that's a really cool effect too because now you're creating like dynamics in the sense that there's more going on here it, it makes it look more real so again I'm going to just time for or just put a time on it here, so we're going to put a key there. And then over here, maybe that blue light moves up here. And then over here, it moves back down again. And I'm doing it as simple as I can, okay? Like, there's different ways of doing all this stuff, just like Photoshop. But now we have some blue light coming in on the waist level. Creating more depth. Super awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <coughs> okay. So that is it for that, guys. Like, this is what's possible. And really, there are so many people who are doing overlays and animations now because the power of Canva, all of a sudden there's so many designers out there trying to sell this kind of stuff. But the really professional stuff is done with Adobe. Graphic designers work with graphic design programs. Canva is awesome, don't get me wrong. I don't want anyone to think you know that I don't know what I'm talking about because I do in the sense that Canva's good. Okay, Canva is great. I admit it. I don't use it though. And I'm going to practice how to do it. I'm going to play with it all week and then come back next week and show you what I've done with Canva. So next week I'm going to do Canva. I want you guys to join me for that because, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, I forgot. A lot of you people are going to Vegas, aren't you? Oh, I want to go so bad. I want to go to Vegas. But the big trade show, at the big uh, photo booth, mobile DJ convention in Vegas. I hope you guys have a lot of fun. Um, think of me and have a drink for me, will you? Uh, yeah, again, uh, I don't know if I can make it next year, but I'm really going to try hard to make it next year for Vegas. Uh, to meet some of you people out there, some of my clients, and, and to see Vegas again. I love Vegas. Okay, I don't know how much time I have left here, but 
while I have some of you people here, I was going to quickly do an overlay. Okay, let's do an overlay. And just to make sure I'm not slowing down, it's going to close this. Okay, guys. So I'm going to create a new overlay. I'm going to go new. And this is 1800 by 1200 pixels, 300 pixels per inch RGB. Again, like I mentioned before, uh, RGB is the way I start. And um, if you have issues with that, then I then I will convert to CMYK. But for now, just stick with the uh, RGB because it's just better for screens and it's just deeper in color, I think. Um, you're going to run into issues with color, like I mentioned before, with the pastels and the really light, light colors like like beige and golds. Um, but overall, I don't really have too many issues. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a background. And when you create anything and you have a layer on the side, whatever layer you're on is what this properties, uh, you know, will edit. Okay, so when I click on that, I can see I can edit the fill. So I will change it to gray for now. Awesome. Okay, now again, you can bring in backgrounds from Google and all that stuff. I want to show you some cool stuff you can do. So just like we did with the text, I'm going to create a bevel and a texture. And the texture, I'm going to go with maybe this one here. Once I have that, I can really like shrink it down. Control it. Do what you need to do. Maybe that. Okay. Okay. So now I don't just don't have a flat color. You know, I got a little bit of texture to it now. <coughs> and I'm going to just rasterize that layer now. Okay, now I'm going to show you something really cool. And this is the brush tool. Brushes are cool, cool, cool. And again, online, you can find brushes for everything for free. Just find that right site and download and play with the brushes. Uh, so I'm going to go to the brush tool here, guys, and show you how to use this tool. It's used by a lot of people. And a lot of people use it for uh, drawing, especially if you have an iPad. And you use Photoshop and iPad. Uh, you, so many artists use um, the brush tools. So I'm going to select the layer and pick the brush tool. And over here, I can select what the tip is. So general brushes, it's like that. I can change, right click, and I can change the size of the brush. Okay, I can use it like a pen, you know, change the color right here. Change it to green. Oops, oh, bad. Control Z, Control Z. Undo, you'll love that. Okay, so now we understand that a brush tool is like that. But it's more than that. Because brush tools can do anything. So, for example, I got all these fancy brushes here. And this one is mm, smoke. The smoke. Super cool. Okay, so now I can add like like a smoke effect. You know? Again, I'm not bringing in PNG files and all that kind of stuff. I'm you know, I'm like doing my own thing. I'm being an artist. And, and sometimes you create things by accident. You just start clicking on things and then before you know it, you have something that you, it's kind of like a painting, right? There's different things like butterflies. You know, let's change the size of that butterfly. Put one there, I'll change the color maybe. Let's go to pink. Let's add a butterfly here. Look how cute that is. You know, I can go into my brushes here and turn that butterfly around. 
And maybe come back up here and grab a different butterfly. Ooh, that one's big. Let's shrink that down a bit. There we go. Look at that. Okay. Now, just go back in the brush pan, or get my brushes again, and go and add some glitter. And it's just a quick Google to uh, find out where all these brushes are. Just type in Photoshop brushes for free, and there's millions of sites. I love this one too, light. You know, different types of light where you can add lighting effects. Look at that. Go to yellow. Blending some colors together. And I'm doing all this with brushes. No need to go and always have to use Google images. Creating things with brushes. Pretty cool. Just want to show you that, guys. Oh yeah, glitter. I want to show you guys. The glitter is my favorite because I use it all, all the time. It's you know I used to have to bring in some type of lighting effect as a PNG file in the old days. I didn't know about this stuff, uh, but uh, you know, it's just you keep on you keep on uh, studying and, and researching, and then you find out how to use brushes. But anyways, I'm not going to go any more on that, that brushes stuff here, but it, it's super cool. Super, super cool. I got a mess here. I'm just going to delete that. Uh, just to review, though, we, we, we do have an overlay. And then I always create a box the same size as this canvas because the canvas is the right size of the photo. And I'll change that to a different color so we can compare. And this is how, without stretching it, keep that ratio, mirror booth, other booths, whatever. And there's your, your photo. And then when you double click on that and you come in here and go to deep, you have a transparent layer. This is where your picture comes through. You can see it through it. Make it one, two, three pictures, whatever you want. That background, you can double click on that. You can make it a gradient overlay, but I put a gradient on it. Um, there's a bunch of different kind of gradients that are already there for you uh, in Photoshop, or you can create your own. Or you can bring in something uh, that's an image. But when you bring in images, make sure it's the right size, the right quality. Okay. Now I have a gradient. And remember, guys, I showed you guys how to take that background and add texture. So we'll go back and add texture. And you can like really change things around, have it any way you want. Play around with all these knobs, guys. That's how you learn. Okay. And all that. So another thing I wanted to show you here before I head off is when you have an overlay and it's not bright enough or it's a wrong color or something okay so I'm going to quickly bring in an overlay <coughs> okay I'm gonna bring in an overlay and I'm gonna show you quickly how you can change everything in it everything so I'm gonna create a new document same size I'm gonna eliminate that take that white out okay I was going to just randomly pick an overlay here and let's just pick in this one. Okay, so I'm bringing this one. Okay, that's a beautiful overlay. But let's say you want it to be brighter. Very easy to do. So all I did was bring in this overlay. I'm going to click, make sure I select that layer and hit Control L. Control L is levels. Now I can make it darker, brighter. You always start this way first. And then control U, which is 
your hue saturation. This is where I'm going to make it brighter. Okay. So really, I took an overlay that was dull. Maybe it's not printing right because it's not showing up the colors very well. And then I before and after, I added the smart filters, the control L, control U, hue, darkness, and changed it right in Photoshop. I can also control U, change the colors. So now it's purple. And now it's whatever, right? And I did all that without having to open layers and all that kind of stuff. I just brought in the overlay and changed the color. Let's say you have a, a file here and you want to use it again, but there's someone else's name is on it. Okay. So, I mean, I just, what I do is just pretty much like rasterize that layer so you can work with it. And I'll take this tool here called the clone tool. And then, like I said, there's other ways of doing it. Tons, 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 tons of ways. And holding on my alt key, I'm able to sample like that part of the overlay and come over here and make it all gone. There we go, magic. And maybe I want to take out that logo. Oops, I went a little too far there. Anyways, you get the you get the idea. Now I can take that overlay and add a new name. Mm. <laughs> when I when I have to come up with a name, I'm like, oh, you think I, Mary and Peter, they're Christians. <laughs> Mary and Peter. Yeah. So I just took an overlay, brought it in, and edited it without having the Photoshop file. Uh, didn't do too good of a job, but uh, you get the gist of it. I'll bring in one more overlay. Like it's it's really not confusing and and then you know sometimes when people have a overlay and then they have this I'll quickly quickly quick uh, quickly create the scenario <laughs> okay so I'm gonna highlight everything and merge it all as if it's just an overlay there we go merge okay so some people get an overlay like this and they're like the it, where the pictures go isn't transparent. It has a white box in it. And sometimes it happens where uh, your designer maybe made a mistake or you made something and you didn't export it as a PNG. So now you have this image that is got this white box in there, right? But really it's simple. You just make sure the layers are rasterized, like rasterize the layer. And then come in here with your rectangle cutout tool. And just kind of like go in there and cut it out. Highlight it and delete. Control D to deselect that now. There. Here we go. Now we have that middle picture cut out. But now you have this problem up here because these leaves cut out or, or like overlapping. Um, you can just avoid all that and just cut it out anyways. Or you can leave the leaves there. How you do that? I'm going to select this tool now, which is polygonal lasso tool. And just click here, come down here. If I hold down my shift, it'll be a nice straight arrow, a straight line. Hit X or a click here. Click here, click here, click here, and now let's click around that for now. Hit delete. Oops, it's like that there. Delete. Okay, now all I have to do now is come in here with the same tool if you want and just cut around. Just leave it like that. And as I, I showed, in my past tutorials, there are like a thousand different ways to do this. 
I like to show you the hard way. Because the hard way is the way you learn, right? There we go. Now we have that picture cut out and we still have those leaves hanging over. So when it comes to having some issues with your overlay, it's not bright enough, it's, it's not showing the right color, um, or the white is still in the, in the where the transparency should be. Easy fix in Photoshop takes only a couple minutes. Don't freak out. Just open up your Photoshop, bring it in, and do some easy things I'm showing here today. Okay. So there we go. So today we, we touched up on some, some cool things, guys. We, we got to see After Effects for the first time. And I know it, it's it's not for everybody. And, and, and really, and I, I'm not even showing it to do tutorials because it's too complicated. It's a whole nother thing, right? But being able to understand what is possible is is the best way to sell your business and to make you stand out because uh, if you're not going to do it, someone else will. And then your value compared to your competitors goes down. Uh, knowing who your competitors are and what they are doing and what they are charging is important too. Do your homework. Not the entire world, just in your local area. Check who's doing what you're doing in your town, in your city, and find out who the best is. <laughs> who's the best? So do your homework, find out who the best is in your area, and then do better. Never undersell yourself. Never. What you tell people, your worth is very important because that's how they see you value yourself. I'll do it for, I'll do like five hours with a photo booth for a hundred bucks. But that's telling them that you think you're only worth, you know, the same price as you know, the rice on the buffet table, you know, so, you know, first you need to know what you're worth. You know, are you really the cat's meow? Do you know everything you need to know? And do you know how to use everything properly so that when you come to the event, you kill it or do you pretend that you know everything you do, you come out and you're not really worth your value. Just take a look. Take a look within your business and find out where you stand. Do your homework and find out who your competitors are. And then you know what to charge. <laughs> Losing my voice. That means it's time for me to go and enjoy the Super Bowl, everybody. I predict, well, I don't want to be like everyone else and say the Bengals, but Bengals. Okay. Rams had a good year, but the Cinderella story must carry on. I hope you all enjoyed the show and it was informative and stay tuned next week. We're going to do a lot more stuff and, and, uh, people who are going to Vegas have fun and have a drink for me. Oh, I wish I was there. I wish I was there. Um, until then, uh, God bless you all. And, uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks for your time. Bye now.